Since the introduction of the soft vaccine in 1955, Americans have been able to greet the summer without a feeling of dread over the danger of polio. Each summer was a time of fear for millions of American parents. The introduction of the soft vaccine dispelled those fears. The polio rate declined annually until in 1960 it reached a low of 3,277 cases, lowest incidence of this disease since 1938, and a remarkable 92% below the 1950 to 1954 average. Yet this bright picture is darkened by two sad facts. First, the polio virus is once again attacking young children with unusual violence. Second, isolated epidemics continue to break out, usually in areas where the population has not received the soft vaccine. In 1957, Dr. Albert B. Sabin of the University of Cincinnati School of Medicine introduced an oral vaccine. Its advantages over injectable vaccines were immediately apparent to physicians and immunologists. The oral vaccine has already been used extensively abroad. Here today to discuss this subject are Dr. Robert Rees and Dr. Albert Wolgen of the medical department of Pfizer Laboratories, a division of Charles Pfizer and Company, which is distributing this new vaccine in the United States. The nature of polio, the best method of utilizing the Sabin oral vaccine and its ultimate implications are all vital questions. First of all, Dr. Rees, just what is polio? Polio is an infection caused by the polio virus. Actually, there are three different types of virus, uh, which we classify as type one, type two, and type three. In 80 to 90 percent of those infected with the virus, the resulting illness is quite mild and may often be unrecognized. Uh, the symptoms may include, however, a slight headache, mild stomach upset, um, a slight fever, sore throat. But in the, those cases where the virus enters the bloodstream, it may go on to the central nervous system and then cause paralysis or even death. Dr. Reese, what is the status of polio today? In 1961, there were fewer cases of paralysis and death resulting from polio than ever before, which we believe is a direct result of the use of the soft vaccine. But yet, speaking as a physician, even one child in a respirator or an iron lung is one too many. This is especially true in terms of a disease like polio, where we do have an effective oral vaccine. Dr. Reese, what is the status of polio prevention today? Today, some 90 million Americans have received one or more injections of Salk vaccine and are at least partially immunized. While this record is good, it isn't good enough. And there are a number of important gaps in our program to prevent polio. There's these gaps which we hope to, to close with the use of the Sabin vaccine. Just what are these gaps, Doctor? There are two primary groups for which adequate protection has not been achieved. The first consists of those preschool children and young adults who have never been immunized. The second consists of those individuals with only partial immunization. And this would include those who have received less than the three salk injections. It's important to remember, too, that a few individuals who have received three or more injections of salk vaccine still do not have adequate immunity or protection. Fortunately, however, this group is quite small. To adequately protect a community, we believe that Sabin oral polio vaccine should be given to everyone under the age of 50. Dr. Wojan, could you tell us something about the development of the two polio vaccines? Well, science for years has been interested in the prevention of poliomyelitis. It was in 1949 that Dr. John Enders of Boston developed a method for growing the polio virus on a tissue culture. From this major breakthrough, Dr. Sabin developed his oral vaccine 
and Dr. Salk his injectable vaccine. Dr. Wojan, how do the Salk and Sabin vaccines differ? To start with, polio is caused by a virus which enters the alimentary tract through the mouth. It passes from the mouth into the intestinal tract where it multiplies very readily. It causes no harm as long as it's in the intestinal tract. However, in some persons, it goes into the bloodstream. And from there, it may go into the central nervous system. After it enters the central nervous system, it may cause disease, paralysis, or death. The SOC vaccine now acts to provide the individual with immunity in the bloodstream. This prevents the polio virus from entering the central nervous system. It is not effective in providing a resistance in the intestinal tract. The Sabin vaccine, which is taken by mouth, not only helps the body develop defenses against the disease producing organism in the bloodstream, but also acts to give intestinal tract a resistance to future invasion by the polio causing organism. Persons who have received soft vaccine may carry polio virus in the intestinal tract and pass it on to persons who do not have intestinal resistance. Dr. Wojan, should those individuals who have already received the soft shots take the Sabin vaccine as well? Oh yes, certainly. Uh, as I mentioned before, the soft vaccine provides immunity at the level of the bloodstream. It is not effective in providing intestinal resistance. The intestinal resistance conferred by the Sabin vaccine gives us an opportunity to eliminate polio, to take out the carrier state of polio. And for this primary reason, persons should receive the Sabin vaccine. Dr. Reese, so far, most of this new vaccine has been administered in citywide or community-wide programs. Just why has this emphasis been put on a community program? It has been predicted that if we can immunize over 75% of the population, particularly the preschool child, we can eliminate the pool of infection which tends to persist in a community in spite of previous vaccination or other protective measures. Evidence um, of the success of this method can be seen in Dr. Sabin's experience in Cincinnati. There he immunized over 76% of those children between the ages of three months and 18 years. Since that community program started in 1960, there has not been one single case of polio in Cincinnati, except for one individual who apparently contracted his disease outside of the city and then returned to Cincinnati. We think this is a remarkable record. What is the procedure for obtaining this vaccine, Dr. Wojcik? Well, after the community has established an immunization program, it is widely publicized in the news media. Thereafter, administration dates are set up. The individuals respond on those dates, go to the vaccination centers, fill out a registration form, wait their turn in line, receive the vaccine, and they're finished. Then in about four to eight weeks later, they would receive a second dose of vaccine and, uh, and in another four to eight weeks, uh, the third final administration of oral vaccine would be done. This would complete a vaccination program. Dr. Wojan, just how is this new vaccine administered? Well, techniques vary. However, the method of administration is simplicity itself. The tasteless, odorless vaccine may be mixed with distilled water and fed to a person by means of a paper cup or a plastic spoon, or it may be dropped upon a sugar cube 
and ingested in this means. The infants usually receive the vaccine directly from the dropper. Dr. Wojcian, what is the reason for the tremendous response to the Sabin vaccine on the part of the communities? Well, the essential reason, in my opinion, is the fact that Sabin vaccine provides us with the opportunity to finally eliminate polio. Secondly, of course, is the fact that it is an oral vaccine. There are no injections. Persons who might give second thoughts to receiving an injection will respond readily to an oral vaccine. Dr. Wojan, is it possible to get this vaccine from my own physician? Oh, yes. Vaccine is available in the usual trade channels, and your physician can obtain it. Many physicians, however, have felt that a community program would be advantageous to all and have been the organizers of such a community program. We have found in many instances, medical societies have taken the lead in establishing community programs. Just who should be immunized, Dr. Reese? We believe that all individuals under the age of 50 should receive the oral polio vaccine. The Surgeon General of the United States, however, has specifically recommended that the following groups be immunized. First, all infants routinely beginning at the age of six weeks and continuing through the first year. All preschool children who have not previously been immunized. And then the older unimmunized groups, particularly the young adults and parents of young children. Dr. Reese, can pregnant women receive this vaccine? Yes. As a matter of fact, it is particularly recommended for pregnant women because this group is particularly susceptible to polio infection. And also, as a matter of fact, the infant will obtain some immune bodies from the mother for the first few months of life. Dr. Reese, once these community programs have been conducted throughout the United States, what do you predict will be the future of polio? After the great bulk of the population has received the vaccine, Polio of all kinds could be virtually eliminated. Immunization then would be a simple matter of maintenance in infants. Thus, polio may well be only a part of history within a few years. Thank you, Dr. Reese and Dr. Wojcik. Ladies and gentlemen, the questions you have just heard answered are those most often asked of physicians about the new oral polio vaccine. Your own physician will be glad to answer any additional questions that you may have. In the meantime, may I urge each and every one of you to help make your own community program of immunization a success by making plans to receive the oral vaccine.